Hello and welcome. In this educational aid, we're going to talk about conservation of energy and conservation of momentum and how each affect orbits. Let's start with conservation of energy. Recall, this law was observed nearly 400 years ago by Kepler in his second law of planetary motion. The law of conservation of energy states that the total energy of the isolated system is constant. Energy can be converted from one form to another, but can be neither created nor destroyed. Let's break this down to better understand this law. The first part of this law is energy. Energy comes in a variety of forms electrical, mechanical, chemical, thermal, or nuclear. Energy can be transferred from one form to another. Energy is a property that must be transferred to an object in order for work to be accomplished, such as moving an object, to stop an object from moving, or to heat an object. So total energy is the sum of these various forms of energy acting on the objects. The next part of conservation of energy is an isolated system. A system is simply a group of objects that interact with each other. An isolated system is more specific or confining, as the objects in these systems neither exchanges matter nor energy with this environment. Now, let's look at an example of conservation of energy. In this example, we're going to look at total mechanical energy. Total mechanical energy is the sum of two energies, potential and kinetic. Kinetic energy is energy of motion. Potential energy is stored energy. Let me give you an example of an isolated system. Think of a pendulum in the Earth. The pendulum is really what we're interested in, but the Earth is the source of gravity on the pendulum and cannot be ignored. When a pendulum swings upward, kinetic energy is converted to potential energy. When the pendulum stops briefly at the top of its swing, kinetic energy is zero, and all the energy of the system is potential energy. When the pendulum swings back down, potential energy is converted back into kinetic energy. At all times, the sum of potential and kinetic energy is constant. So this law of conservation of energy should make a little bit more sense. But how does this relate to orbits? An orbit shows total mechanical energy being conserved, just like the pendulum. In this example, our isolated system is a satellite in its orbit and the Earth. Recall from Kepler's educational aid that periapsis is when a planet's orbit is closest to the sun, and apiapsis is when the planet's orbit is furthest from the sun. This is similar to a satellite orbiting the Earth. The satellite is at perigee when it's closest to the Earth, and is at apogee when the satellite is furthest from the Earth. At perigee, the satellite is moving fastest at this point, so kinetic energy is at its greatest, and potential energy is at its least. At apogee, the satellite is moving slowest at this point. So potential energy is at its greatest, and kinetic energy is at its least. Because of conservation of energy, the closer the satellite is to the Earth, the faster it's moving. And the further the satellite is from the Earth, the slower it is moving. At any point on the orbit, total mechanical energy is the same. Now, let's talk about conservation of momentum. Conservation of momentum says that the total momentum of a system remains constant or does not change. More importantly, because total momentum of our satellite's orbit does not change, our satellite's orbital plane is fixed in inertial space. Let's break this down so we can understand why this is important. Being fixed in inertial space allows to have a reference frame relative to which motions have distinguished dynamical properties. More simply, being fixed in inertial space gives us a point from which we can determine and more easily visualize the characteristics of a satellite's orbit. This is seen in the classical orbital elements educational aid. To demonstrate this concept, let's start with torque. Torque is the relationship between applied force and the distance from the center of mass of the object. When a satellite is orbiting the Earth, the greatest force acting on the satellite is the gravitational pull of the Earth. However, this pull is in the orbital plane and in the direction of the center of mass. So the torque applied to the satellite in orbit is zero. But any out-of-plane forces apply a torque, such as J2 or out-of-line thruster firing. 
J2 is discussed in the orbit types educational aid. Since our torque is zero, the angular momentum vector cannot change direction. The angular momentum vector of the satellite is found similarly to torque. It is a relationship between the distance from the center of the Earth to the satellite and the momentum of the satellite. The angular momentum vector is perpendicular to the orbital plane. Because torque is zero, the angular momentum vector does not change. So the orbital plane must be constant, therefore fixed in inertial space. As the Earth rotates under the satellite's orbit, and the Earth orbits around the Sun, the orbital plane stays fixed. This fixed orbital plane allows us a point of reference to describe the orbit of the satellite. To sum up, conservation of energy tells us the total energy of an isolated system is conserved. The total energy is always constant. Therefore, as one form of energy increases, another must decrease. We saw this in the example of the satellite orbiting the Earth, which showed a constant trading of potential and kinetic energy. The higher the satellite is, the slower it goes. And the lower the satellite is, the faster it moves. Note that in this discussion, we only cover total mechanical energy. There are other energies that affect orbits. Conservation of energy is this balance or trading of energies. Conservation momentum shows that our satellite's orbit is fixed in space. It allows us to have a reference frame relative to which we can distinguish the satellite's orbital properties. Despite out-of-plane forces, such as J2, they are rather small when compared to the gravitational effect of the Earth. Therefore, our reference frame is inertial enough to allow us to characterize the satellite's orbit. We will eventually need to account for the long-term effects of these forces that we are ignoring. In the Orbit Types Educational Aid, we will explore how these long-term forces influence practical orbits. That is it on conservation of energy and conservation of momentum. I am Jeremy Brown with the National Security Space Institute, and I hope you enjoyed this educational aid.